Hello, Floss Tube. My name is Megan, and this is Stories and Stitches. Welcome back. We are on Floss Tube number 11. At the time of recording, I am recording on September 30th. You will see this on. Was that put it October 3rd, I think is Tuesday, is when you will see this. Um, I can't believe we are already into October. Um, but that being said, it has been some beautiful fall weather here where I am the last couple weeks. Uh, it's been nice because it's still been getting warmer during the day, but it's cooling down nicely overnight. So it it feels like fall. Uh, I'm just looking out my window here because it's a beautiful sunny day. It feels like one of those nice end of September, October days that you want it to feel like. Um, because it's so gorgeous out though, I'm hoping that none of my neighbors will be suddenly super loud. That's the goal. Um, but I'm pretty sure with the way I edit that you won't be able to hear them if they are. So it'll just be <laughs> if I get myself distracted. Anyways, look at me rambling on. Um, welcome back. I'm so glad you've joined me. Uh, here on uh, Stories and Stitches, we talk about cross stitch, other crafts, um, stories, books, games, anything I'm kind of interested in at the moment. So I am so glad that you have joined me. And if this is your first time, I hope you enjoy it here uh, and that you'll stick around. So, for those of you that are um, returning, you might know it's been a little longer since my last video. Uh, when we spoke last, I wasn't sure if I would be sticking to the two weeks or if I'd be going the extra week because I was camping last weekend. So, uh, it didn't end up working out for me to film last weekend at all. So, did an extra week in between, but that kind of works with some of the things I have planned or that I want to do this month as far as uh, my Floss Tube updates go, so I'm I'm okay with that. I hope that I have some progress, a good enough progress over that time to show you. Um, though, <laughs> I will say, uh, as I had also mentioned the last time, I have been working on putting together a schedule. So I am trying to fit in my, I have my full-time job, my creative work that I am trying to really focus on and build up because that's what I would like to be doing um, full time if, if you know, that that's the dream. I'm trying to work that in. I'm trying to work in extracurricular things like my band and choir and all that kind of stuff and still find time to do stitching and do video games and all the other things I love doing and, um, and also sleep. And it turns out that's a bit of a difficult task. So the schedule is still a work in progress, but I am hoping hoping that we will get there. I mean, it'll be a work in progress for a while as I tweak this and I tweak that, but I'm hoping we're, we're getting closer to something that resembles a schedule I'd like to sort of stick to, but it's still not perfect because I still haven't quite found time where works best for things like stitching, etc. Anyways, I might go into that a little bit more later on. Uh, as we go along. So all of that was supposed to say that I feel like I haven't gotten a ton of stitching done the last few weeks, at least not as compared to what I was getting done in the summer, which I think is more just a perspective thing because I was off for so long in the summer, but still feels like not a lot. And yet I still have nine projects to show you. So I think nine is about an average amount of projects for me to get done in a month. So uh, or to touch in a month. So we'll see how that continues. If that's sort of a tread, the tread, if that is a trend that continues on, or if it switches up going forward into the fall. So the plan for this video is we are going to talk about my stitching progress. Uh, we're going to look at my October plans. I'm going to show my other crafts I've been working on the last three months, or the last three months, the last three weeks for those of you who are interested. And then I am going to include a story section at the end, but I think it's going to be pretty short. 
this time around. As always, there will be chapters below. I know last video I didn't get those up right away, but the chapters will be split below if there's any sections you want to skip around to. Okay, so with that introduction, how about we get to the stitchy progress? I feel like I'm forgetting something or that I've zoomed through, so who knows? Maybe we'll come come back to that. But stitchy progress. Okay, so I have all my projects here like normal, uh, but unlike normal, I didn't put them in any sort of order down here. So I'm going to do my best to find what we're looking for in a reasonable amount of time without giving me of a few hours from now too much editing to do. The first project I worked on was Gamer Nouveau. Let me just get this one out. This is uh, by Gecko Rouge. And uh, do I have it? Yes, I do. Okay. So this is a Gecko Rouge um, kit by Medusa Dollmaker is the artist. This is what it will look like when it is finished. There. So this one is Gamer Nouveau. I sometimes call it the Gamer. I kind of mix up my names on occasion and call them whatever I want to call them. I am doing this one on 28 count one over one. And I worked on this once since you saw it last, uh, but I got pretty good progress on it actually looking at, looking at my numbers here. So here is where it was the last time you saw it. And, oh, excuse the, the thread that's there, but here is where it is now. And once again, I don't have the paper for behind. Here is where it is now. So I believe that all I worked on this time was um, gray, like this blue gray. I think if I'm not mistaken, I just did all of this. Like I worked my way across as far as I could in the Q-snap. Um, there's not a ton on the other side of the Q-snap here. So I think my current plan on this one is to finish filling in here across from this section to here and then work my way all the way across and then move the Q-snap to get that last chunk so that I have that whole thing done across. I think, I think that's how I'm kind of thinking I'm going to work on this one. But I switch things up. The next time I pick it up, I might want to work on a completely different section. Has been known to happen. Um, but anyways, I got done 529 stitches on that one. I am doing full cross on this one, and I am currently at 2.84%. Okay. The next project that I worked on is one that you have seen quite a few times. This one comes out a lot in my Garon Stree, Garon Toten Bags bag, my villain's bag. And this is Tonight We Ride by Autumn Lane Stitchery. Uh, so here is where it is, or this is what it will look like when it's finished. And this pro project, um, this pattern was from their Halloween box last year. And it is actually available now on their Etsy shop to purchase. Here is where it was the last time you saw it. And here is where it is now. So I have done 381 stitches on this one. I've done it and I worked on it two different days. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think I had finished most of the gray the last time, if not all. Um, and I believe that I was working just in black, sort of in filling in a lot of this black in here. Um, I discovered that I have a uh, customization in here somewhere. I did something wrong in this, in my counting of this. I think I missed a row or missed a couple stitches. So I'm slightly off. I'm like one off in here, but I wasn't taking it back as far as it needed to go back. So I will just make it work. Counting is hard, guys. <laughs> Counting is hard, especially when you're doing, I don't know, 
it, something about the way that these go, I count them wrong so often, but either way, I, I am honestly loving how this one is turning out. And, uh, as you will hear later on in the video in the plan section, I'm hoping this one will get quite a bit more work done in October for some extended spooky stitching. So I don't remember if I mentioned this one, I have done a total of 381 stitches in the last couple of weeks, uh, and it may get worked on again today. We'll see. I didn't get a chance to work on my spooky stitching yesterday for the full moon um, because I was actually putting out fall and spooky decorations and that took longer than I planned. So I didn't work on that at all. So I might do that later on tonight to get some spooky stitching in. We'll see. Um, but hopefully that one will get quite a bit more progress before you see it the next time. Okay, so we are on to project number three, which is where? This is Hibernation House. Um, I don't believe I have a picture of what it will look like when it is finished. Yeah, oh, I do. I bibbed. So this is what it'll look like when it is finished. This is Hibernation House by Amanda Butler. And, oh, oh dear. And um, it is from the A Cross Stitcher magazine. I don't remember which year or month, but it is from A Cross Stitcher magazine. And I feel like this little squirrel is a great little fall one. I'm going to see. He feels very fall to me, but I might kind of keep working on him through the fall and winter because those are very hibernating seasons, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Anyways, this is where he was the last time you saw him. And I worked on him two days uh, the past few weeks. So you've seen where he was last time. <laughs> And this is where he is now. So you can't really see too much over here. There's nothing past that. And I haven't worked up in that area anyways. I have been working on, <clears throat> as you'll notice, the door. So I have all of the green done in the door. I have this, the, what do you call it? Like the bar that locks it and keeps it closed. And the little handles and hinges all done on it. And I've started working, I don't think you can really tell because of my fabric that I'm using, um, but I've started working in a little bit on these sort of the flower type deals that will be in the curtains. So I think the plan on this one is to um, finish. I have a little bit left in the door. So I might do, I have a bit of white to do in the door and then I have to do, I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll just finish what's in the door or what's also in this part of the curtain. Uh, and then I do want to start working a little bit on some of the backstitch because there is a lot of backstitch uh, in this piece and quite a lot in the door. Um, I mean, there's not a ton, not as much as like some of the dimensions and stuff, but there's a fair amount in this, I don't think you can quite tell, but in this crossbar, there's a lot to make it look a bit more like wood um, mostly what I can't decide is if I do the curtains first and sort of finish everything and then move into that. I've also actually just noticed that there's some part of the door down below here that I need to do under the green. So, but yeah, I think I'm going to have to work on finishing the door before I move on to do anything else. So I'll probably do the door and then sort of some of the tree because the tree is, it doesn't look that bad, but there's a lot of colors in that tree. It was a little tedious with switching switching between colors, or at least that is how I remember it from the last time I was, or from when I worked on tree last time. So that is where we're at with that one and kind of the plan for that one. And I did, did I say I did 471 stitches on that one? I worked on it for two different days. Okay, so um, next up I had another full coverage. This one, yes, it is in this bag. This one is from Heaven and Earth Designs, and it is Goldilocks by Scott Gustafson. Here is what it will look like when it is finished. And I am working on this one. I am doing this one on 25 count easy grid. 
two over one tenth stitch. Whoops, we got colors going everywhere here. Two over one tenth stitch. So uh, this one is going, I'm actually getting really good progress on this one, even though I only worked on it once. So I did work on it one day. Um, here is where it was the last time you saw it. And I got done 410 half stitches, stitches on this one there. And I, I don't remember where I worked on with this one. So you will see, should be able to see from the before and the now picture. I think I might've worked on some of this cream in here and possibly some of this. Um, but I'm not actually totally sure. I might've also come across here. That might've been where I was working, but I don't remember. This one was pretty early on, even though it's fourth where I'm listing it, relatively speaking, it was fairly early in my, like in the last three week period. So it's been a little while since I worked on this one. I am hoping to pick it up again or more shortly. I am really enjoying this one. I've been enjoying some of these like the full coverages right now. Um, so hopefully I can work on those more this month and, and the, until I'm kind of not feeling them as much. Cause sometimes I really like working on smalls and sometimes I like working on those full coverage. It kind of comes and goes, Ooh, we should put, I just found a color sitting on my table. Sorry. I should get there a little bit. Uh, I should put that away. <laughs> I'm not going to know where it goes. Sorry, I am shaking the table. My goodness, you'd think. I had no idea what I was doing over here. Uh, <laughs> so that one I did 410 stitches on, as I said, and I'm at 2.57% on that one. Apparently today is a bit of a discombobulated brain day for me to be filming this, um, but that's okay. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too all over the place for you. Okay, next up is one that you see every single video, and that is my temperature shelf. Um, I don't have a picture of what it will look like when it is finished. And also, in a surprising turn of events, I have not done today's stitches on it. So for those of you returning, you will know, and for those of you who are new, I'll explain. So for this one, I try very hard um, to keep on top of it. So I don't work on it daily, but I work on it weekly. So I work on it every Saturday, generally every Saturday morning, kind of before I do anything else is the plan. And I do all the stitches for the previous week. So I do the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, because I don't have such Saturday Saturday's temperature yet. So normally by the time I'm filming this video, whether I film it Saturday or Sunday, I've normally um, done the stitches for the day or for the week. But I haven't this week because I, when I got up this morning, I decided I wanted to read instead. So I did a little bit of reading instead of cross-stitching and then had a bunch of chores. Anyways, you don't care about any of that. But suffice it to say... I still have stitches that need to get done on this one today. Anyways, this is how it is looking so far. We are down there getting down towards those last shelves. And I did, so I've done um, 273 stitches on it since you saw it last. Oh my goodness. Here's where it was the last time you saw it. And then I have worked down in the September section down here. So you would have seen a few, a bit of it because um, you would have seen the stitches that were done the day um, for sort of the last week of August, first week of September maybe. Uh, but here is where we're at. So we're all the way through the first half of September and then we have the next few days. There should be, I should basically be almost done this second shelf by now. So the next time you see it, I'll definitely have the rest of this shelf done and then we'll be into the into the first section of October. So we are getting there. It is um, not quite at 90%. If I had done it today, <laughs> like I should have already, it probably would have been at 90%. But all that we have left, for those of you who are just joining, all that we have left on this one is books, is temperature books. Everything else has been done on that. 
that is how that one is coming. Um, I am enjoying it still, but I'm also very much ready for it to be done. Um, I don't know why, not necessarily because I want it done. I just, I don't know. I do think that next year I'm probably not going to do a temperature um, piece unless one comes up in the next couple months that I really, really, really love. I haven't seen any announced yet, but I'm also so far behind on floss tube. I've been with being away so much this summer, I am, I have not watched a lot. So I'm very much out of routine on my watching. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking I might skip on it and work on kind of do something else as my Saturday focus instead of, excuse me, sort of a temperature piece. But we shall see. There's still, what, three months left <laughs> of the year. A lot can change in that time period. There have been times I've decided that I'm doing a temperature shelf like the week before or a temperature chart. I've only done two, but I think the first one I did, I, I don't think I decided with much notice. So we'll see how that goes. But um, that one should have a good amount of progress the next time you see it. So, okay, enough rambling. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like there's things I normally say for each project that I'm forgetting and it's throwing me off. Next up, we have another one you've seen quite a bit. Um, I'm starting to give up. I, I don't I don't think this one is going to be done by the end of the year. Um, so though you may know which one I'm talking about. Nickety peek over here. This is my Greenhouse of Oddities Sal um, by Lola Crow Stitchery. Um, this was a sal that came out in... June or July, all of the parts have now been released, so it's fully completed. So this is how it should look when it's done, give or take. Um, there's one part that has a variation. Um, so I'll either be doing the one you see or I'll be doing the other variant of it. Um, I am currently on part the 14th, the 14th. I am currently on the fourth planting. There are 11 plantings, I believe, and I am very close to being done the fourth planting. So I am almost at the fifth planting. So here is where it was the last time that you saw it. Do, 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 do. And here, let's show you the whole thing first, is where it is now. A little bit curly cued down at the bottom there. That's where it is now. I have been working on, let me get it set up so you can kind of see a bit of a better picture of what I've been looking, working on. I'm working on this section down in here. So we have a well that is, I think that's the part that still needs finishing. We have this little rat who is so cute. Uh, I think he's adorable. I think all the animals in this one so far are just adorable. So we have him. We have this here, which is a giant pitcher plant, which, funny story, not the giant pitcher plant version, but I saw a ton of pitcher plants when I was in Newfoundland. Um, they are in quite a few, not all over, but because it's very specific type of ground, like marshy, that they need to be in. But uh, yeah, we saw pitcher plants. They are a carnivorous plant. And the other carnivorous plant over here, we have a, I believe this is a Venus flytrap over in this section here that I think is done. Um, I haven't done any of the backstitch in this section though, so there will probably be a bit of backstitch, but I have 111 stitches left in that planting plus any backstitch. So hopefully that one should be done shortly. I could use, I, I don't know. I don't know if I want to, I, I was going to say I could work on this today and finish that up, but I'm, I'm not totally sure if it'll be this one or hibernation or uh, tonight we ride that will, will get done. So, but that definitely should have the fourth planting done the next time you see it. So we'll, we'll hold me to that because those 111 stitches shouldn't be too, too bad to do. Uh, and I did, how many have I done on that one? I have done 
819 stitches on that one and I worked on it for two different days. Uh, and when I was originally putting together sort of my notes for this video, I had thought that that was the project I got the most progress on over the last few weeks. So I might not be as far as I want to be on it, but I did get really, really good progress on it the last couple weeks. Um, it is the, turns out it's actually the one that I did the second most amount of stitches on this month, but 819 is a good amount for that one, especially considering I only worked on it for two different days. So next up, I don't have to bend down because this one is living in this same bag right now. Ooh, that was a almost sneaky sneak peek of the pattern. We were fast enough that you couldn't see it though. So I will make sure when I'm editing. Anyways, this one is half the, oh my goodness. I am, yes, half the fun by Ink Circles. I have it written down in, as I think I said this last time, one place I have it written down is half the fun and one place I have it written down is twice the fun. So I get myself confused. Half the fun by Ink Circles. I am doing this one on um, 14 count picture this plus and I'm doing it with, I am doing this one with DMC Pearl Cotton uh, size a no five five pearl cotton size five I believe and I would say it's probably a little bit thick I probably should have gone one smaller but I do like how it's turning out and then this is also I am doing two DMC colors and then one hand dyed by Rolanda variegated which was the inspiration for the other colors this was the color I wanted to do I miscalculated how much I would need, so we bought two other colors to fill in the gaps. And this is what it will look like when it's finished, or what it generally will look like when it's finished here. And here is where it was the last time you saw it. And here is where it is now. So I am very happy with the progress I got done on this one. Um, I have, so I mentioned the last time that I am going to split it into quarters and that I will aim to get a quarter done sort of over a period of a few months. And so with that in mind, I realized when I was working on it that I was very, very close, all things considered. I am having tr struggling with this needle. I was very close to having the first quarter done. So I thought I would just finish it. So I have the first quarter done plus a bit because I have, there's four balloons in the center. So one is for each quarter. So I have three balloons and three little boats done. So just over a quarter, but... Uh, the whole first quarter is done. So basically what you see here doo -doo 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 will repeat in each section. So with that, I think this one is going to go away for the rest of the year. It's not getting finished by the end of the year. And as we go further, I'm just going to be wanting to do more and more either spooky stitching or Christmas stitching or wintery type stitching. So this one will go away with the exception that if I get a sudden, you know, tear to do it, I'll work on it. I'm not going to stop myself and be like, no, 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 you're not, you're not allowed. So if I, if I want to, I will pick it up. But, and if it works perfectly for our prompt. So if there's a prompt in the stitching group that I'm in that this one works perfectly and this is the only one, et cetera, et cetera. I will pick it up for that. Uh, but <laughs> otherwise it will go away until January. And then the plan will be that this will be done by the end of 2024. So the plan, since I'll be going in with three parts to do three sort of quarters, I'll split the year up into thirds. So the first, the, my second quarter, a quarter will need to be done by the end of April, and then, what is it, May, June, July, August, one by the end of August, and then the last one by the end of December. That's the plan. We will see how it goes. But now that I have um, one whole section done, my plan is to do the same color for each of wherever it appears. So, for instance, 
this boat, wherever this boat appears. Uh, is that the right? We are not going the right way. Hello. Um, <laughs> that's the right way. Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. So for instance, wherever this boat appears or this airplane appears, it will always be blue. That will always be blue. Um, right. The car will always be green, etc. So now that I have the first quarter done, I have already made all those decisions. So I don't have to make them again. So I don't even have to think about what color will be what, which will help with picking it up going forward on that one. Or that's the hope anyways. All right. And I did how many stitches? I worked on it one day and I did 344 stitches on it. And I worked on it when I was camping and it most definitely smells like campfire. Can you do Okay. Uh, next up, I feel like I'm umming. <laughs> There's a lot of umming today. Next up, we have Northern Nights. So this is the project that I try to work on anytime I go camping or kind of to a cabin or away, etc. It is, the bag is wet for some unknown reason. I think I might have touched. Uh, there is, um, there's a plant over here that really likes to drip, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move some things out of that plant's way. Okay, so this is Northern Nights by Dimensions. I keep forgetting, I have got to look up and write down the artist for this one, but here is where it will look like when it is finished. And I have done uh, what have I done? 542 stitches on it. A mix, I believe, of half. I think it's been a little bit of a mix of half stitches and full cross, but mostly full cross this time around. So this is where it was the last time you saw it. And <laughs> I was going to do a whole explanation, but I'm just going to show you where it is now. Here is where it is now. And what you might notice if you've been watching my videos for a while is that I've gone a bit rogue from where I've been working. And last video, I talked about how I couldn't decide if I wanted to do pages, if I wanted to do like this page, then this page, if I wanted to go all the way across and then work down what I wanted to do. At least I'm pretty sure I talked about that with you guys. Um, when I picked it up the last time, what I decided that what I really wanted to do was this whole tree. So that's what I did. So I have gone all the way down with the black in the tree and we've hit the bottom corner. So that is the bottom corner down there. There's a little rock down the bottom corner that's all the way done. Will I keep working on this tree the next time I pick it up? I have no idea. I might. Um, I also don't really know when I'll be picking it up next. I might not be picking it up until going away again in November. I'm not going to like a cabin or camping, so it it may not come with me, but, and I may not work on it again until next summer. Who knows? I'm hoping I'll work on it before next summer, but we'll see what I want to do the next time. Anyways, I have done, I did four, 542 stitches on it, as I said, and based on my very rough estimate of stitch count, I am about 10% done. So I say very rough because as it's a dimensions kit, it doesn't, it like I, I don't have it in Pattern Keeper where it has a stitch count and it's not a true full coverage in the sense, I mean, it's full coverage, but um, I, I think it's pretty square, but I think it's it's not true coverage in the sense that I think there's a few spots that are empty throughout. Not a ton, but there are a few sections that kind of don't have color in them or don't have stitching, um, which I don't have the full pattern. I have bits and pieces of it here. So anyways, long story long, what that means is I did a very rough estimate of how much it would be by figuring out what it was long by what it was wide, because I think that's listed and just multiplying them. So. Based on that rough estimate, I am 10% done, which I think is not too bad. 
considering the state of some of my other full coverages. <laughs> uh, okay, I worked on that one day while I was camping last weekend, actually. Next up, we have my new moon, new start for this month. And I started it way, 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 way later than it was supposed to be started. Uh, because for some reason, I was, this one is also wet. My goodness, that stinking plant over there. Okay. Um, I started it way later than intended because I forgot when the new moon was. And I think, I feel like what's happened is because of the full moon at the end of August, because August had two full moons, what's happened is the order in my head of the new moon versus full moon has swapped. So the new moon is earlier in the month and the full moon is later in the month, whereas earlier it was opposite of that. So I'm all mixed up and backwards. That's why I forgot that spooky stitching was yesterday because I forgot that the full moon was the end of the month. And it's why I missed doing my new moon new start because wherever it was supposed to have been, I wasn't ready for it. So by the time I finally got everything picked out and ready to start, it was when we were headed away for camping. So I started it while I was camping and I did the Christmas Hippo, which is a freebie or was a freebie by the blue flower. If I can find it, I might try to link it below, but it's a blue flower, the, the blue flower freebie. I do not have a picture of what it will look like when it's finished, but that is okay because this one was actually a SAF, a start and finish for me while I was camping last weekend. So this is my hippo. Here he is. <laughs> Isn't he so cute? I love him. I love hippos. I, I always have, um, ever since I was little. And he is adorable. It's really hard to find nice hippo cross stitch patterns. So I was very, very happy with this one. It is all in the called for colors with the exception of the red because whatever red it called for, I didn't own and definitely didn't have while I was camping. And I hadn't planned on finishing this one while I was camping. And then I got on such a roll with it that I was like, well, I am so close. So I just picked a red from what I had and I'm really happy with it. And it is on 14 count Herald by Picture This Plus. 14 count, I believe. Yes, 14 count Herald by Picture This Plus. So he is there. So he's gone on my whip list and off of it as soon as he got there. But hopefully I will have him fully finished by Christmas. I haven't quite decided how I'm going to fully finish him yet, but his thoughts are in the works for him. Okay. I'm going to put him in a slightly different spot there because he doesn't need to go back in my whip pile. We are almost done. I have one project left. Oh, stitches. So that one is actually the one that I got the most progress. Pro that one is the one that got the most progress this month and also the most stitches. It had, if I counted correctly, which it's, I was hand counting as I went. So, you know, could go either way. Uh, there's about 875 stitches in that one which is just higher than my greenhouse, which had eight, an 8 to 19 in the part that I was working on. Okay, we have arrived at the last stitchy pro project. Ahala, I cannot speak. The last one I worked on the last couple of weeks. And, oh, it is. Oh my, okay. Santa's Journey by Jan Lynn. So Janlin Kit, do we have an artist on this one? Donna Vermilion Giampa is the designer. Uh, but it's a very old Janlin Kit that I am working my way towards. And there is how it will look like when it's done. And let me get it out of the bag before I show you where it was the last time you saw it. This one hasn't actually got a lot of progress. I worked on it for one day. Um, this was the only project I worked on this week and I did not get a lot of work done on it. Um, 
I don't know. As I said, I'm still figuring out where stitching fits in with my weeks. So I didn't get a lot done on this one, but I did get it picked up. I did 105 stitches on it. And as I like to say and remind myself, progress is progress. So 111 stitches is more than it had on it the last time. Here is where it was the last time you saw it. And this one is so tricky for me to show. Here is where it is now. I think, I'm hoping you can see it in frame. Okay. Yeah. I have been working on reindeer legs. So where are we? We are in here. I have been doing uh, just some of the browns in the legs there. So, um, look, let's hold it this way because, you know, <laughs> you gotta improvise when you have a scroll. I'm not used to working on scroll frames. This is the only one I'm currently working on on the scroll frame. So, uh, yeah, so I've been working on the legs and the different browns in, in the legs there. I'm just about to start, I believe, on some more of the hoofs, I think. And I don't know what's up with these guys' legs, but they, they need to get filled in, so... And then my plan on this one, once I get legs done, is I can't decide if I want to keep working up in here into this second reindeer's head, because there are two reindeers in here. This isn't just one freaky reindeer with four legs, which is what it looks like right now that he has four legs at the front. Um, <laughs> so I might just start working on his head, or I'm going to work up this border a little bit. One of the two. It'll depend what colors I kind of feel like working on and how much like confetti-y stuff I want to work on versus just working on a straight row. So I did, as I said, 105 stitches on that one. So not too, too much, but hopefully, hopefully that one will get worked on more this month. And I will put that one away later on. So I have a, such a mess. I try to keep this not messy as we go, but I have not succeeded in that today. Okay, so that is all of my stitchy progress. Um, feels like I didn't do a lot, but not too bad. I still did 10 projects actually, and I got little bits done on them here and there. So maybe we'll just work on being more gentle <laughs> to myself as we go forward. Um, and as I'm trying to figure out where to fit things now that I'm back at work and not off on vacation for six weeks. As I'll tell you, that full-time job sure does cut down on stitchy time. Really, really gets in the way. Okay, so we are at my October plans. First up is um, my the Fandom Stitching Central group that I am in. The monthly challenge, so normally they have monthly prompts along with weekly prompts. And so the weekly prompts, I'll kind of keep picking at which ones I can do. Some weeks I get more done on them than others. It kind of depends how they fit with what I want to be working on. But the monthly prompt for this month is a little bit different and it is two separate challenges. And you can do either one or the other, or you can do both of them. And if you get both of them, you get an extra, I believe it's 500 bonus points on top of whatever points you get for the stitches that you get done. So because, you know, I'm over ambitious, my current goal is to do both of them, but that also kind of works with what I was wanting to get done this month anyways, sort of. And of course, if I, you know, if it gets to the end of the month and it turns out I wasn't able to finish one or both of them, that's completely fine. So what are they? So the first one is that you can do either 13 different projects on 13 different days. So they have to be on different days. You can't just, you know, have one day where you do 13 different projects. So 13 different projects on 13 different days with a minimum of 100 stitches to count for a day. And then you get one point per 100 stitches. So the minimum is 100, but you can work on it as many hundreds as you want to get more points. I will probably be aiming for the 100 stitches, but we'll get to that. The other one, the other prompt is to work on one project for 13 days. 
Same rule, minimum of 100 stitches for it to count as a day. The two can be worked on either concurrently or one after the other. That's right, right? Concurrent, yeah. <laughs> they can either be worked on at the same time or you can do one and then the other. So I will probably be working on them at the same time, but we'll see, it, it, that'll all depend. They may be one after the other because I may not have the time to do 200 stitches in, in any days, but I am gonna try to do both. I am going to aim for the 100 stitches as the minimum. Normally when I stitch, I try to, or I want to do more like 200 stitches when I pick up a piece, but I think that that might be partially what is stopping me from getting stitching in right now because I, I don't always have the time to sit down for that long. So I'm kind of hoping that with these two projects, if my goal is to get at least 100 stitches done and just, just aim for the 100 and then put it away, unless I happen to have a ton of extra time, but aim for the 100 and put it away and get the points that might help me find those places where I can slot in a project because I can do it in 50, 50 stitches and 50 stitches sections. That's the hope. I'm hoping that these two will kind of help me slot in, um, slot, slot some stitching in. And even if I do both, they, even if I were to do them one after the other, that still is only 26 days, which leaves me with some days where I'm not going to get any stitching done. So, and there will be days where I can get a little bit more done. So I, I'm hopeful. We'll see how it goes, but I'm hopeful. So I believe I was thinking that for the project where I do just like the one project for 13 days. I was going between doing either the gamer, which I've been really feeling right now, or my Tonight We Ride. But as I've thought about it, I think I'll probably do Tonight We Ride. October is just perfect for the spooky stitching, right? So, and that is my spooky stitching project, my main one that's on the go right now. So I think that's what we're gonna do is I'm gonna aim to work on that one for 13 days uh, for 100 stitches a day. And that one can also count as one day towards my 13 projects on 13 different days, as long as I meet the requirements. So I'd have to meet the 100 stitch requirement for the one prompt and the 100 stitch for the other. So I'll either work on it 13 days, 200 stitches on one of the days, or that one will get worked on for 14 days at least this month. And then for the other ones, what I'm going to do is, um, well, they, I will be rotating through them, uh, but we'll get to that in a second when we talk about my dice. Um, so let's see, did I, yes, okay, I think that was most of the thing for that, except I'm currently thinking of, I might try to keep you updated with how those two prompts are going this month uh, with YouTube shorts or little like vlogettes, really short videos. Um, I don't know if the YouTube, I kind of, I always find myself wishing that the YouTube short was just a teeny tiny bit longer than it is. Sort of like some of the little bit longer TikToks. I don't want them to be fully long, but just a little longer. because they're not, I don't know. I don't know if it's quite long enough for what I want, but we'll see. I'm, I'm considering doing something like that, like a little daily blur, a little daily show. You wouldn't have to obviously don't ever feel like you need to watch it if it's not something that interests you, but you may, you may see some of those or little pop-ins every couple days with progress updates on those. Um, but feel free to let me know if you have any thoughts on whether you'd like those or not like those um, or what you might want to see in that kind of thing. Um, if you have any thoughts at all. <laughs> anyway, so what would be the 13 projects that I'm thinking of working? That works into my dice rolling for the month of October. So First off, for my dice, I have determined or decided over the last couple weeks that my what I was doing for my weekly sort of master rolls, I'm not loving. So I still love the master list. I like that I'm getting projects on that worked on. It's a nice way to make sure I'm picking up different things, but I'm finding with how little stitching time I have right now, setting myself a project off of one of those, especially since the goal on them is 200 stitches. I mean, I could, I might knock that goal down, but 
Either way, I'm finding that rolling that once a week on top of other stitching I might need to get done, like temperature shelf, etc., means I'm not getting as much time as I was hoping to get on the pieces I picked for my October or for my September focuses. Um, there were projects I didn't even touch at all in the month of September, even though they were on the focus list. So I think what I'm going to try, I'm still going to try the master list rolls for October. But the change I'm going to make is that I'm going to roll the dice twice at the beginning of the month. So both for my um, stitching rolls and for my craft, other craft rolls, I'll roll it twice, each of them, at the beginning of the month, and then I will have the entire month to work on those two projects. So they won't be one a week, so it's first of all half as many projects, because if we count, if we assume four weeks, that would have been four projects stitchy, four projects crafting. So it'll be just two for each of those, and I can work on it kind of the whole month. And so if I decide to pick it up, um, like maybe I'll do them both the very first week and be done. And then I won't have any more rolls until the end of the, the month and can just work on, on rolling my daily or semi-daily dice. So I think that's what we're going to try for that one. And I'll see how it goes. Um, with the focus pieces I've been picking, it may end up being that I kind of tweak or abandon the overall weekly or master list. I might make it more something that I roll the dice and pick a piece from the master list and that has to be in my focus for the month. Um, and that's how I do it, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm just, I'm finding, especially right now with less stitchy time and less, um, I, it, it just, I, that was where my focus was. And then I didn't get my focus pieces done. And I picked them as focus pieces for a reason because I wanted to work on them. So that's my current thought with that one. So we'll see how that goes. And then for the daily-ish dice, they'll continue on kind of as normal, but with a tweak. The tweak is um, inspired by the two projects or the two prompts that I'm working on because normally if I roll the dice, it's kind of whatever it rolls. So I could theoretically roll the same project five times to work on it for five different times. But since I need 13 different projects, that isn't going to work. So what I'm going to do is it'll be a little bit more like I'll roll and then that project can't be rolled again until I've gone through the list. And if I do roll, so like let's say I rolled number four tomorrow, because tomorrow is October 1st. If I rolled number four tomorrow, I couldn't then roll four again. And if I did roll the number four, it would be wild. And I would pick one of the other projects that was kind of calling to me to work on instead. Does that make sense? Uh, my list has 11 different projects and one wild space on it as it is. So, which means that there will be a wild, at least one wild that can be, you know, one of my master list projects, perhaps, depending on how that goes. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do. Uh, so I will need to have a couple different ones in to get my 13, but I think that will go a little more smoothly. And I do have a few new starts planned for this month, or at least one. So that's how that will go. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that I'm going to try that this month. And if I like it, I might do that again in November, but a little bit less formal. It will more just be that like, it's not because I'm going to have a goal to work towards for that. It'll just be that that way I at least touch each project once. And then I think once I've gone through the list after that, it'll just be the random rolls and whatever gets worked on twice or three times gets worked on twice or three times after that point. So that's what we're going to do for dice going forward or for the next month, maybe two months at least, see how it works. It's all a work in progress, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so what are the projects that are gonna be on this list? Well, I'm pretty sure they are almost all the same projects from last month because as I said, I didn't get as much progress done on them as I wanted to. And they were fall-ish projects anyways, so they work for October. So what are they, you might be wondering? 
or you might not be. I want to tell you anyways. First one is Tonight We Ride, as I said. And yes, this one is on my roll because it can count for a daily different as well as the one project for the 13, 13 days. My book cage bookmark by Lola Crow, which I would like ideally to have that one done by the end of the month. So that's the goal for that one. Greenhouse of Oddities, Hibernation House, Goldilocks, Chocolate on Everything, because my goodness, that poor piece has not been put, I don't think it's been picked up at all this year, maybe once, needs some love. So if it can get at least 100 stitches in on it, that would make me feel so much better. The Gamer, Moonlight Sampler by The Blue Flower, uh, Flea Market Flowers by Lori Holt, Sansa's Journey, which you've just seen, Whatever my new moon, new start is, which I am hoping will be a Halloween piece. Uh, I forgot to mention, I have some haul coming from 123 Stitch that I was kind of hoping would be here for this video and hasn't arrived yet. I think it's coming this coming week. So there's one, maybe two projects in there, uh, or at least like the fabric for one or two projects that are kind of spooky stitching slash October E new moon start potential. And I also have a couple smalls I may want to start. So anyways, the new moon new start, if that's rolled, like if I roll that tomorrow and obviously it's not started yet, I will just either roll a new one or count it as wild. And then the last one of course is wild. And so it will be, who knows what it will be for the third, for the 12th and 13th. So that is, as I said, only 12 projects, but I will have two projects rolled from the master list as well. So assuming they're not also on that list, they will go in there. And if they are on that list, then I just get to pick something. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think, I think that is all my plans with the exception of beach babes, which as you'll notice, I made those grand plans that I was going to work on it after like any time I had extra time in my day, I would work on it. And then promptly stopped having extra stitching time. So the plan on that one needs to be reworked. We will see. Perhaps if I find that I like this 100, like this 13 different projects and 13 days on one project deal, I might do that in November and like just on my own and have Beach Babes be the other one that I get kind of 100 stitches done on day on that one. So We'll see. I might, I might do that. So I think this will be a good test month to see how some things go on. I think I say that all the time. Honestly, if you stick around, which I hope you do, because I love that you're here with me, uh, you will probably notice that my plans and my set setup of plans is fluid. It's ever changing. I'm always looking for the thing that will work best for me. So maybe one day I'll settle on the exact thing, but there's a lot of fluctuation in that. So, all right. I think that is it for the stitching. Uh, here I was thinking this video was going to be shorter and I'm not really sure it is. You know, I started off, I'm like, oh, I have nothing to say today. What am I going to do? Um, I'm just going to go through so fast. And then here we are. I'm already at the hour mark on my, on my filming right now, even though I know that's a little off, but honestly, what can you do? What can you do when you are chatty and when, you know, you get yourself discombobulated and down rabbit holes? <laughs> Anyways, I will say goodbye to those of you who are just here for the stitching in a minute. Before I do, though, I wanted to discuss one other thing. You may know or you may remember that I have an overall goal for this year to not have more than 23 projects or whips in progress, um, whips on the go, <laughs> works in progress in progress, seriously, whips on the go at any one time. Now, I am failing at that at this point. I currently have 25 whips on the go. So I have, and I have more projects that want to get started before the end of the year. It's not me who wants to start them. The projects want to start. What am I to do? Anyways, the projects want starting and I'm already over my goal. So my new plan that I thought would be kind of fun 
is I am going to try to end the year with no more than 23 projects on the go. So by that, you know, strike of midnight, when 2023 becomes 2024, I will hopefully have no more than 23 projects on the go. I will make one exception, and that is that because I, if if project 24 is my temperature bookshelf, that one is allowed to be finished on the, January 1st because I cannot physically finish it before that because I need that last temperature. So if that's the one, it like it's allowed to be, does that make sense? It, it's living its exception life just because of the nature of it. So even though it's technically the first finish of January, we're, we're going to make sure it balances. I digress. So I want to get to 23 by the end of the uh, end of the year. But <laughs> to make it kind of a little bit maybe fun, maybe it's only going to be fun for me, but to maybe try and make it fun, I am not going to tell you after today, I am not going to tell you how many projects I have in progress. So I have 25 right now. I double checked, I made sure I have all the things checked off, etc. I have 25 projects currently on the go. I will not update you on that number again until my whip parade. This might only be fun for me, but <laughs> we're going to go with that. And let's see if I can A, reduce my whip list by two, because right now I have two too many. And also as I add projects on, keep it down because I might need to reduce it by more than two if I have new start scheduled. All right. Sound like a plan? Let me know in the comments what you think of that. Also in the comments, uh, let me know what your stitchy plans are for October. Are you someone who is stitching on spooky stitching or fall stitching? Are you stitching on everything but? Are you Christmas? Are you kind of doing your regular rotation? Let me know. I would love to hear what your plans are for the next month or next couple weeks even. All right. For those of you who are here for the stitching, I will say goodbye to you now. You know, feel free to join us in the other crafts, but no pressure. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will talk to you in my next video. And for those of you who are sticking around, let's head into what other crafts I have worked on this last few weeks. Hey, so I have actually, this is probably partially why I haven't gotten as much stitching done as I thought, but I've done a lot of other craft progress, which is good. It's a good thing. I have a lot of craft projects that, that I want to get finished. I want to get that whip list down too. So anyways, you might remember that I said last month that I was hoping to finish my socks by the end of the month. And... I have done it. You may may know this if you follow me on Instagram, but they're done. So you will notice they are not, let's see. Let me see if I can, <laughs> I'm going to wear them on my hands. They don't match, like they're not exact matches when they're on. They don't quite match exactly. They have a little bit of a different, the heel is different. But I love them. I love the stripiness. I am okay with them not matching on stripes. Um, they are so comfy. And I am almost positive that I cast on an extra small for this one instead of a small. But I corrected and they fit just fine. So those are my socks. They are done. I have another pair that I will be starting. I was thinking to not start them till January. Um, but I was really enjoying them, so will they may get started before that. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so those were the socks. I also worked two separate, well, <clears throat> two hours, give or take. One day, but I counted it for two dice, and so I rolled, worked on it for two different hours. Worked on my Christmas gnome ornaments, which those are how they will look when they're done. 
and I have done two more balls, two more little Nomi balls. I don't remember which one I started with. I feel like it might have been the gray one, um, but I now have three. <laughs> I can juggle, except that I can't juggle, but you know, whatever. I have three little, this one sideways, Nomi balls done. They are not on my focus, are they? They might actually be on my focus list for this month, but they're like a secondary focus for projects because I really want to finish my Halloween gnomes before Halloween. So I think some of the other, like the other focuses on my craft list will, will kind of take a backseat until those ones are done. But I'm pretty happy with that. I'm very much hoping that I can finish at least the three of those by the end of this year or by Christmas. Um, and I say at least because I believe you can actually get four, at least four done. Um, but I'm going to start with the first three and then I'll decide what one I want to do as another one. The next one I worked on was, let me see if I can pull the right. So it was my crochet top. And, um, I don't know that I have a picture of what it will look like when it is done, but let me find what it is looking like right now. It's hiding. I have gotten the last time I showed you the back or the whole front done, the front bodice. I am now working on the back bodice and I've gotten quite a bit done. Actually, I think had I started this, I might've started this the last time you saw it. Um, but now I've gotten quite a bit done. I think I am almost, almost at the point where I start to divide for the, like to, to do the shaping. Sorry, I'm just comparing it with my other one. Yeah, not quite. I may be halfway. Um, I'm a bit concerned that I'm doing this one too tight. <sighs> It's not enough of a concern that I think I'm going to take it out, but I, I don't know. It feels like it, like it should be a bit bigger because it's a couple stitches bigger than the front and depending on how I hold it, it's smaller. So unknown, we'll see if I really decide that I'm worried about it, I might take it out, but for the moment, I am uh, leaving it as is. I think it will be okay. And, I, and I'm going to really hope. I'm going to really hope that it's not just a titch too small when I finish it. Because if it is, I'll be very annoyed with myself. Um, but I'm really happy with the progress on that one, actually. It's starting to look like there might actually be hope that it'll be finished in time for spring. Which would be nice, because I'd actually like to wear it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay next up I have worked on my orange blanket now this one I am not going to fully take out um, because you can't really see the progress because it's like a long knit blanket right so I have worked on it twice I believe so I've gotten eight rows done because I do four rows at a time for this one that's how it's looking same as it was the last time because you know I've only added whatever this like the equivalent of not even that that's a bad example the equivalent of that much on it so maybe two inches onto the top but inch by inch this one will get itself done so that one I am trying to work on I have sort of a, a meeting on Thursday nights that is just over an hour long and that tends to be about the right amount of time for me to finish a set of four, like four rows. I can sometimes do it in less time than that, but I've been trying to work on it during there because I don't have to think about it too, too much. And it lets me get it worked on at least once a week. So I will continue doing that going forward. Next up is a sewing project. I did, so one of my focus sewing projects, I only, I only got sewing done once this, this last few weeks or in September, <clears throat> but my project was my trick or treat bags. <laughs> 
So I bought this as a panel. I bought two panels. So I have four bags. They each made two. Two bags plus some other goodies. And I am going to give three of them to my nieces and nephew. And I will keep one to share with my mom. So that's the first one. There. They're all a little different. The second one here is has the Halloween treats again. This one has trick or treat on the back and has a green straps. Next up is this one here, which has a green trick or treat and Halloween treats orange on the back and sorry a green stripey handle and then the last one is this one here orange on the back and the orange handle so that was all four bags i did them all in one afternoon it was a little bit of a longer afternoon and at one point i was had just about had enough but was at the point where I wanted them done. So they are done. And I think the three of them that are leaving me will be going to their homes at Thanksgiving. And as I mentioned, they have, there were other bits and bobs on the, the panel. I wish I had brought them in, but I didn't. Maybe I'll, I'll try to bring it in next video. Or I'm thinking of doing sort of a spooky fall decoration tour video, just a little one. Uh, so you might see it in there. But anyways, they're two little ghosty pillows and they actually glow in the dark. Um, I might try and put a picture. We'll see. Maybe I'll show them next week, as I said, or next time. So we, we have two little ghosty pillows, which are adorable and perfect for our fall decorating. My mom made those. And then my mom also made these little bowl um, heat things. So they're like a hot pad that you put a, like a soup bowl in. I should have brought up a bowl to demonstrate, but bowl goes in here and it keeps it from being hot on you. So this one has a spider in it and a skeleton man who is unfortunately had his head was the victim of a seam. Poor guy. And this one here also has a spider, but a little orange spider or a black spider, but on green and orange and another little guy uh, his head is a little more visible but uh he was still a little bit of victim and you can actually reverse them so he could be in the middle if wanted so yeah we got all of those off the two panels and i got those two panels on sale for a very good price so i am very happy with that and it's you know two panels worth of fabric that are no longer in my stash so that is all of the other crafts I believe that I worked on this month. So yeah, that is everything. I can't believe we're already at everything. My plans for crafts for the next couple weeks is to just kind of continue on. I have a few sewing things I want to work on that I'm going to try and work on on Sundays. And then I want to work on my Halloween gnomes as my main focus. And then my two sort of secondary focuses are my orange blanket and my Christmas no more ornaments. And I will roll for those, but again, I know, I know where the main, <laughs> main kind of focus is going to be for those ones. All right. Well, that is it for the craft section. If you are leaving now, um, I wish you all the best. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you liked the video and subscribed so that you get notified about my future videos. And I am going to move into a story section now, which I think is going to be a bit shorter than normal. But how about we head over there now? Okay, so for those of you still sticking around, Thank you so much once again for sticking through to this, this part of the video. Um, I don't actually have a lot to share this week for this section. And I, I did think about just cutting it all together and not doing it, but 
there were a couple of things I wanted to chat about. So, and I enjoy it. So I thought I'd leave it in. So, oh, I've, I've replaced ums with so's again. I gotta, I gotta figure that one out. Maybe, maybe the, the key is if I go over a certain point, then I start to use all those filler words. We shall see. Anyways, um, as I mentioned a lot earlier, I'm still working on that schedule. I'm still trying to figure out how to balance everything. And that's, that's kind of what, where we're at is the balancing. And I like to do too many things. Like I should just have one hobby or one thing I want to do, but I want to do all the things and I really am trying to focus on, on that sort of bundle of what could be considered creative work. Um, because that is what I would like to ultimately be doing. So I'm trying to focus on that and make sure that that's sort of the priority. And then once I can get that established as sort of the priority, because even that requires a whole lot of shuffling, then after that, I can start to kind of fit things in where they fit. Right. Um, but so yeah, I, I, it, it work in progress. Right. So first up books. Last time I talked about how I was having a hard time fitting reading in or picking up books and reading or listening to books or anything like it just wasn't happening. And I was sad because I wanted it to happen. So I still haven't read a ton over the last few weeks, but I have read more this last week than I have in ages. And what's currently working or what I'm currently trying is that I've set myself a goal to read 20 pages a day. And that's of either a physical book or a like ebook. And I've been doing it. 20 pages seems to be a good number because it's not too overwhelming. Like 50 feels like a lot right now. And like 10 feels like not enough. And saying, oh, I'll read a chapter is so inconsistent because in some books, a chapter is three pages and in some it's 50. So I've set it to 20 pages. Most days I go a little bit over that. Today I read for like an hour, so I went way over that, but it's working. I'm going to keep on doing it and see if it keeps on working or if it lets me kind of settle into a rhythm where I can eliminate sort of the 20 pages a day goal and just go with what feels right. But for now, we're going to keep the goal in there on a daily. It's It shows up on my daily checklist. And then audiobooks, I am also trying to establish a routine of about at least 20 minutes a day. It works really well if I have time at the end of the night to either cross stitch or game. And if it's a game that doesn't require too much focus because I can listen to the audiobook at the same time. I haven't done that all the days. There were a couple days this week I've missed. But as I said, I've same with the reading. I've listened to a lot more than I have in the previous weeks. So hopefully that will work and I'll actually have some books to share with you. Um, I am working on two books right now. So an audiobook and a physical book. The audiobook I'm working on is a wizard, a wizard's guide to defend, oh, a wizard's guide to defensive baking by, I think it's TK Kingfisher. I was supposed to double check that before I put my phone on the tripod, but I believe I will put a picture here so you'll be able to see the author if I had it wrong. And the physical book I am reading is The Bone Hacker by Kathy Rikes. And I am very close to finish that one. Kathy Rikes, I read all of her books. Um, I just really enjoy them. I always have. So um, I am reading that. Both are kind of mysteries, but both are very different. The Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking is a, I want to say a middle grade fiction. Uh, is it middle grade? I think it's middle grade fiction. The main character is 14, 14 year old witch, essentially. So I'm enjoying it. It's really good. I'll, I'll talk more about those hopefully next video where I can give you a little bit of a, how I felt about them once they're done. But those are what I am reading. I'm kind of have some half spooky reading plans for the rest of the month. So hopefully I can get to some of those. Uh, games, I don't have anything to, shows I definitely don't have anything to discuss. I've been watching nothing new in the realm of shows. Games, I haven't been playing anything else either, but wanted to mention that I am very hopeful 
in the next video, I will have some games for you to mention because that is one of the things I'm trying to do more of is work a little bit more on my uh, other channel, my second channel, which is for gaming. And I haven't been doing any gaming or I have, but all the same type of things. So that's the hope is that if I can work on actually playing some of those games I want to play, and I have a couple spooky ones on my list, that I'll have some recommendations for you next video. And creative work, as I've mentioned already, I think I've already mostly talked about this. This is actually probably the area where my schedule has had the most success in the last few weeks because I'm actually working on my novel. I had set myself a 16 week goal to finish the last half of my novel or whatever that I have to edit for the first edit sweep. It's going to need more edits, but for this first sweep of edits, it worked out that I had kind of 16 rough sections. And so I could divide that up on 16 weeks. And so far I am sticking to the schedule I've set for myself. It's going to get a little dicey the closer we get to Christmas. So I'm hoping to try to sort of get ahead so that I can actually stick to that goal and have it done. But we're moving along I, and, and I think I'm, I'm starting to get back in a swing of things and that really helps with my focus. So hopefully I'm, I'm very hopeful that by the end of December, I'll be able to say that the first sweep through of edits of my novel is actually done. That will feel so good. <laughs> there will still be so much work to do. Like I know there's still a lot of work to do, uh, but knowing that I've kind of gone that first sweep will feel really nice and cut out kind of a lot of the like, very obvious parts that have to get cut. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I'm going to keep on trucking, keep on working on getting those creative juices flowing and working on those projects I want to work on. And I will keep you updated as I go along. So thank you very much for being interested in, in those things, those non-situ related things. So if you got this far, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, no, let me know a specific thing in the comments. <laughs> it, I uh, apparently don't know how to read my own notes over here. If you've got this far, let me know if you are a spooky decorator for fall or more of a cozy pumpkin Thanksgiving decorator for fall, fall, or if you don't do seasonal decorations at all. I kind of do a mix. So I have sort of some spooky-ish, but like cutesy spooky, and some um, sort of pumpkinies and more fall. It's, it's an interesting time to decorate for me because in Canada, our Thanksgiving is in two weeks or is the ninth, um, not even two weeks in a week. So our fall comes so close to, th to Halloween. So if I only, if I wait until after Thanksgiving to decorate for Halloween, it's not up for very long. But then you also have Halloween decorations out at the beginning of the month when it's Thanksgiving. So it's a, my, my whole decoration is a, a mushmash. And perhaps you'll see a little video of that later on. But let me know. Let me know what you do. Anyways, I will stop jibber-jabbering over here and let you get to the rest of your days. I hope that you have... Uh, enjoyed this video and thank you so much for spending time with me. Let me know if you've been working on something. Let me know what you were working on while we were chatting. I'd love to hear that and I will see you the next time. Have a wonderful stitchy week. Bye!